Welcome back YouTube. Welcome back 99 family. We're back with another video for you guys. If you're new to this channel, on this channel we talk about personal finance, business finance, and professional development. If any of that possibly may interest you, please go ahead and take a second to subscribe to our channel and give this video a thumbs up. Don't forget get to hit that notification bell when you subscribe so that you can get all the great content we post. With that being said, we're going to get into my worst financial decision ever and what you should know before buying a car. First off, before this video starts, I'm going to go ahead and do this for the rest of y'all because it's necessary. All right, see, I deserve that. I deserve that slap right there. Um, and y'all are gonna find out why very, very quickly and very soon. Um, however, you know, as it's always your responsibility to um, know what decisions you're making financially and do your own research and do your due diligence. This is why I say we need to educate the kids because this happened to me at 18 years old as soon as I got credit. This is the boom, slap in the face, what hit me so hard. So let's talk about it. Um, so at this particular time in life, um, I was new to credit. I had a lot of credit. I had a good credit score, however, um, I did not um, know necessarily how to use my credit or how to leverage my credit or you know anything um, about you know uh, pre-approvals or pre-qualifications or what any of those things are that we talk about on this channel and that's why I'm so adamant about talking about pre-qualifications and pre-approvals and building your credit. Um, because this particular situation that happened to me, um, I will warn you all before you go to a car dealership, please be prepared and please, 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 please do not ever let a car dealership run your credit. Um, later on in the video, I'm going to talk about it more in depth, but let's kind of just look over this deal so that, you know, we can talk about it. So, you know, buyer me, um, seller or creditor is the dealership that I went to. Then at this time I was 18 and I bought a 2018 Corolla, brand new. Um, so what happened? If you look at this deal right here, I don't even have to tell you what happened other than they legally robbed me. That's the best way of putting it. Uh, this is legal robbery right here. So, um, here's what happened. Um, I was in a situation where I was 18, uh, being a good law-abiding citizen that I am, I had a job working at a school um, as a substitute teacher. And um, I had a car, my car um, was a 1996, Nissan Maxima and um, you know it was a it was a good reliable car that I was driving every day for the most part however I had an issue with my car I started getting this uh, smoking out of my car and I took it to my mechanic and after having had this car for what two and a half uh, three years now that I bought for five hundred dollars um, the mechanic was saying hey um what you're gonna need to do is um either you know buy a newer you a new used car or go buy a new car because uh this particular car is a six cylinder car it's currently running off of five cylinders um anybody who knows anything about mechanics knows that means you have very little life left um, so, you know, basically it was like, you have no choice but to get a new car, um, unless you want to do an engine swap and for what you could do an engine swap for, 
you could go buy six of these cars. So at the time, um, you know, we had just come back from the summer break. Um, during the summer break, I was actually, at that time, making more money than I was making for the school board. And even with that, um, trying to support yourself and live on your own at 18, it's a, it's a rough process and it's hard to save money. Um, and just trying to pay for, you know, all the bills and things that you need at 18 and being responsible, it's hard to save money. And, you know, I can say that honestly and, you know, share that with you all who are trying to get there. Um, but basically what happened was they took my car, um, with it having the situation that it was, um, you know, it wasn't worth very much. So they came back to me with this paper the first time they offered me like $700 a month. So there's no way possibly that I could afford that. Um, then they came back with $600. i am like, I still can't afford that. They're like, well, what number would work for you? I said, if we can get it around $450, then we can do it. So they got me down to $489, um, which was still higher than I originally said, but, you know, it was doable for me. So, um, you know, they come to me with the paperwork and everything to have me sign the paperwork. Um, at the time, I wasn't very aware and conscious of interest rates. Um, so what happened was initially they gave me a shorter term um, with a higher payment and a lower interest rate. Um, and then what they did was they went out and they extended the term. And when they extended the term, they increased the interest rate. Um, well, the first deal that I declined had a lower interest rate um, than this deal. But what they will do at a car dealership to get you to buy the car is they will overvalue their trade and then they will bump up the interest rate so that you end up paying more over a period of time. Um, so whereas I went in there and I was probably initially approved for like a 12% um, or probably like a 14% interest rate. Um, they took my trade in, they bumped up what they were gonna give me for my trade in amount, um, which allowed them to, they put the value of that 96, um, that was gonna die any day at $3,000. Now you may say that doesn't make any sense. You know, why would they spend that much money when you didn't even spend that much money to buy the car? Their dealerships, they're smart. This is how they get you back. Um, in Florida and in most states, they can increase your APR um, a few percentage points. You know, I think it's three percentage points. So they up the APR to 16.78%. And then that made my finance charge over the term of this original loan 13000 two hundred seventy seven dollars and forty two cents um whereas the amount finance was twenty one thousand um what is it nine hundred and eighty seven dollars and forty six cents so that made the total of my payments um being thirty five thousand two hundred sixty four dollars and eighty eight cents um and that is over the course of six years on this original loan term um and basically what that did was that ensured that they were able to get that extra money back um periodically as kickbacks um off of increasing that interest rate so they were going to make back that extra $3,000 over the course of the loan on top of them getting a kickback for referring the loan to the lender that they did. Um, what they did on top of that with running my credit so many times, um, they actually ran my credit, I wanna say 10 times that day. Um, you know, when I went for my first car they ran my credit 10 times, I believe. Um, and then uh, when I went back 
Um, again, before I knew any better, I'd gotten in a car accident and I took it to the dealership to get it fixed. And this same dealership um, offered me to trade that same car back in and just get a new car. Um, that day they ran my credit again, 30 times. Um, so that's one of those things that you have to be aware of also when you're going to a car dealership is that car dealerships do not have your best interest in mind. They have their best interest in mind. So, um, you know, they don't care about how much they run your credit. They don't care about what interest rate. Uh, they, they don't care about any of that stuff. The only thing that they care about is them profiting and making money. And these people are making most of their money off of commissions. Therefore, they're going to give you the worst deal possible, generally speaking. Um, so, you know, with that being said, um, the main things you should look out when you go to a car dealership is come with a pre-approval um, because that technically makes your deal a cash deal. Um, you're going to get a better interest rate from your bank or your financial institution, your credit union, um, than you will for the car dealership anyway. Um, in addition to coming with a pre-approval, do not allow them to run your credit when you get there. They will try to say, oh, we can run your credit to beat out this score. Do not let them do that because they're going to do a, what they call shotgunning. And when they shotgun your credit out and they send it out to multiple financial institutions, that's going to give you multiple um, inquiries. Um, the next thing that you want to uh, make sure that you're doing is negotiating down the principal of the car, not the loan payment. Um, you want to make sure that you're thinking more of your final investment than you are of the temporary monthly expense. Um, a good rule of thumb also is that when you're buying a car, make sure you could afford to send in double whatever that payment is every month. Um, one, not only just for your safety and um, security in your budget, but two, because most of the time that's what you want to do. You want to pay the principal on that loan down quickly, send in those double payments, and um, if you can get a lower rate, refinance that car for a lower rate as um, sending in those payments will definitely um, definitely shorten the term of your loan in addition to allowing you to later refinance your loan for a better rate or um, you know pay less on your overall loan. Uh, number, what is it, number four we're on now? Definitely make sure that um, your interest rate on your car is not a ridiculous rate. Um, personally, um, with the car deals that I've done now and everything, I would not get a car with an interest rate over 6%. Um, be extra careful when buying used cars as their interest rates are allowed to be higher. I've seen people with used cars with interest rates up to 25%. Um, personally and that is ridiculous you will be paying for that car two three times over um, another thing that you want to be conscious of is making sure that there is gap insurance on your car so in case of the worst if you get into a car crash or anything like that um, you are not um, going to be in a situation where you have to pay out that difference between the loan value and the value of the car um, that the insurance company appraises. Um, with that being said, thank you all who've watched to this point in the video. Um, those are my tips on purchasing a car. Um, you know, that is my personal story, and um, I want to kind of be, you know, transparent with you guys and allow you all. To see that and I will see you all in the next video and don't forget to like comment share subscribe and peace out